Okay, so the DAW or DAW digital audio workstation, how to choose, how to choose uh, what you need and what your, what you want out of your system. Okay, of course these are Macs, but of course you don't have to. It's not that it's really popular belief that I don't know MacBooks uh, or Apple computers are something that you that the professionals use only that. If you find someone using something that's not a MacBook, he's not a professional. Okay, this of course not true. These are really great computers, but of course it's not that if you, if you cannot maybe afford a MacBook Pro or a Mac Pro that you're not going to have a good, uh, good sound or good production or whatnot. Of course, that's, that's true. So, what you need to take care when uh, choosing a computer, in most cases, CPU would be the most important, so the processing power, we're not going to go into depth about what the processor or what uh, RAM is, of course. If you have questions, stop and ask me. But the thing is that uh, if you are more into electronic music production, this means that you are using a lot of uh, lot of virtual instruments which have which load up samples in in the RAM. Then you need a lot of RAM. But if you are maybe if you are maybe uh, just a guy who usually mixes bands, so you don't load up, you don't work so much with MIDI and virtual instruments and you don't need so much RAM. It's better to have a faster processor. So, if anyone has a question now about why this is so asked, I don't want to go into details about this because this can take like an hour. But the thing is that in these days, in 2012, all, all computers which you buy, which you pay, I don't know, more than 700 euros for are going to be okay for mixing. And the point is, a lot of people like to have, um, like to have, let's say, what's the word? They like to have, they like to have something to blame for having a bad sounding mix or something. They like to say, oh, only if I had a MacBook Pro, or only if I had a better sound card, or only if I had a more RAM, or I don't know what. Then that's that's the reason why I don't like my mix. That's not true. It's an excuse. It's it's an excuse. Yes. So. The point is that all of these things can help you, of course, work faster or more efficiently or something like that, but none of these things are going to make you... It's not true that your mix is going to sound better when you buy a new computer. I mean, that's clear to everyone, but I mean, people like to say that just because they need an excuse. So, of course, it's good to understand, it's good to understand what these things change and what these things influence, and then you can decide what you need and if it's going to actually help you. The point is, never buy something unless you actually understand what that something does. So, don't, don't just spend money on bigger and more expensive and faster things if you don't need them. You don't need 18 or 16 gigabytes of RAM if you're not some, I don't know, if you're, if you, basically if you don't need them, you don't need them and that's it. You have to know that you need them to buy them. You're not just, yeah, I have 18, 16 gigabytes of RAM and, you, and maybe you don't know why you bought that, so of course, it doesn't make sense. What's more important in most cases is actually, is actually storage, so storage in the sense of the hard drive. Usually, if you have a desktop computer, desktop computer, it's better to put your system, so Windows OS 10 Mac system, put the system on one hard drive, put all your audio files on another hard drive. Why? Because imagine you have like 20, 20 tracks in your project with, which are streaming from the hard drive and your computer needs to find those tracks and the system, you know, the system files at the same time. The hard drive needs to, I mean the laser needs to go from one point to the, to the other point of the hard drive constantly. It's much better that you have one hard drive for the system, one hard drive for audio files, and that's it. Of course, if you're working with a lot of software instruments, these, uh, these um, basically these samples get loaded into ROM, then you need a lot of ROM, okay? But the point would be that it's usually much better to have uh, uh, a separate hard drive for audio files. So that's it. Then, of course, hard disk or HD versus SSD, solid state drives, you know what that is. So basically, solid state drives work better, but 
you don't need them for audio files. So you remember I just said that you would have you would buy you would have a separate hard drive for your system, a separate hard drive for audio files. You don't need an SSD drive for audio files. It's better to have an SSD drive for your system because then your system is going to be fast and you click on an application it it uh, pops up immediately. An SSD drive for audio files is overkill. So it's not something that's going to make everything much, much better, okay? There are some other tips and tricks, but usually also bigger hard drives are faster, bigger in capacity. We won't go into detail about why, but if you have a 5,400 RPM hard drive, which is 200 gigabytes large, and you have the exact same hard drive, which is 2 terabytes large, the two terabyte hard drive is going to be much, much faster than the smaller one, simply because of the data density. Google that if you, you're interested in what that means. So larger hard drives faster than same smaller hard drives. Um, also, USB 2, 3, Firewire, Thunderbolt. I don't know if you know about Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is these, like, okay, everything's connected here, but this new connection type that uh, basically Intel invented and Apple computers have them. It's, uh, this, is a f this is the first hard drive which has Thunderbolt output. And Thunderbolt connection basically it's one gigabyte per second connectivity. So it's one gigabyte per second. Uh, so this means that if you have a Thunderbolt hard drive and uh, you connect it to your, to your Mac, you definitely don't you cannot say, if only I had a faster hard drive, <laughs> and I would have a better mix. But maybe, okay, if you have money, you can buy all the best stuff, all the bestest stuff in the world, then you have no more excuses, and you can start mixing, and that's it. Uh, okay. Questions? Yes. Uh, What's the minimum uh, amount of RAM or CPU? Uh, yeah, well. I mean, people, people, minimum amount for what? I mean, oh, I don't know. mix and recording. I mean, if you want to just mix, then I mean, things haven't changed so much uh, from, when, from when digital sequencers, sequencers were invented. The only thing that changed was processing power. So you can, you can create a perfectly good sounding mix on a computer from 1999. So the point is, it really depends on, I don't know, what's acceptable for you. I mean, some people like to not use too many plugins, some like to use gazillions plugins, but okay, let's say, let's say if you spend, I don't know, 700 or 800 euros on a computer, that's uh, more, than a, more than a good computer for, for working. So let's say if I have to pop a number for RAM, I wouldn't go below 40 gigabytes, let's say. Let's say. But of course, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, this depends on, on what you're working and what your workflow is. Um, okay, sequencer choice. Logic Pro, Apple, Cubase 6, Pro Tools 10. These are the latest version versions, of course. If you have some questions, ask. But, and if, you, if what I say you think you don't like, but I'm going to say that all of them are the same. It really doesn't matter. You, you, all those discussions online, no, Pro Tools is better than Cubase, no, Cubase is better than Logic, blah, blah, blah. This is just, just a senseless, useless babble. The point is that it's, to, it's 2012, all of these sequencers can do mostly the same thing, and also none of the, none of the things that maybe some of these sequencers is missing is not going to be an excuse for not having the bestest sound possible. So the thing is, also, one thing which is absolutely not true is that they sound different, okay? Cubase doesn't sound different than Logic, and Logic doesn't sound different than Pro Tools. If you press play, mix down, so they don't mix down the audio files differently, at least not so differently that you can actually hear it, or hear it and say, this one is better, okay? If you find one, one blind test on the internet which proves that, you know what the blind test is, that the person is listening to something and he doesn't know what he's listening to, 
and then he says this is better if he chooses the same thing 50 times without knowing what's what then it makes sense that to say that this is better usually what you sign what you find with these blind tests is what you find with these blind tests is that people don't want to do them okay or if they do them they prove that here everything is the same or you find some small differences but usually usually people will hear a difference they will say, oh, okay, this is a bit, maybe if I squeeze my brain a lot, I will hear that this is a bit better than this, but he's not going to be able to say, uh, not better, he's not going to be able to say what's better. He's going to be able to hear that it's a bit different, but not, he cannot say what's better. So the point is, don't go around and uh, waste too much thought on.